Up next, I'm going to name my top five favorite Parfums de Marly fragrances. Not your typical list when people think of Parfums de Marly. You know I like things a little bit different. Stay tuned to find out what they are. Welcome back everybody to Joel The Nose here at Osme Perfumery in beautiful Wynwood section of Miami, Florida, the kind of arts district capital here of Miami. Um, all right, today I'm gonna do my top five Parfums de, Mar Parfums de Marly fragrances. For those of you, most of you know Parfums de Marly, right? It's one of the most popular niche fragrances. They kind of cross over because you can get them in some department stores like, you know, Saks or, you know, maybe Neiman's. You know, this is gonna be uh, one of those kind of almost crossover brands, but they're still niche in my mind because all they do are perfumes. They don't do, you know, clothes and shoes and other things like that. Now, you know, my lists are always, you know, a little bit more unique. I don't go for the standard favorites. You know, I like things that are different. That's why I love niche perfumery. So my list may not be populated with some of the more famous or popular ones, and maybe they are. Who knows? I'm gonna see what they got here. Let's come in. Number five. Number five for me, my fifth favorite is, you can see the blue bottle there, bottle there Percival. Percival, this one to me is, I love how Parfums de Marly does their fresh fragrances. And again, I like how they make me feel. They're different from a lot of the other freshies out, that are out there, way different from the designer world. I mean, just light years ahead. But each one's a little bit different. And what I like about this one, it's got this kind of like ice flower accord, obviously got lavender, almost, you know, most fresh fragrances are gonna have a lavender mix. Pick, I don't know if you can see there. Um, but I like that, like whatever it is, I saw, I don't even know what it is, but to me it has this kind of cool sensation to it, and I'm gonna attribute that to the ice flower. And if you've seen one of my other videos I've done recently, I've been trying not to get caught up so much in all the note breakdown. As an attorney, that's what I like to do. I like to research, I like to dig deep and figure things out. And of course that's important, but I'm also an artist. I do a lot of painting, some of you have seen, I do photography, painting, I write. I do a lot of artistic, uh, you know, kind of <clears throat> uh, ventures. And so I'm trying to get more into the feeling side of the fragrance than just the analytical. I think you need a good combination of both. But sometimes, you're right, sometimes you think too hard about breakdowns and you may not even try a fragrance because you look at the note breakdown and you're like, I'm not gonna like that. I'm trying to get away from that. I'm going, what do I feel, all right? So then I'm gonna come in at Let's see, number four, and number four is the very first fragrance launched by Parfums de Marly. This is Darley. Look at that bottle, it's almost totally clear. Again, I like this one because I like classics. This to me was a great opening fragrance. This is a great first fragrance for a house to start with. It's very classic French perfume. It's again, it is, it's not a freshie, but it, it, it's, you know, it's not dark, it's not too heavy, it is a little bit lighter, but it's got this beautiful, again, mint, which to me separates it from a lot of other fragrances, and I don't see Parfums de, Mar Parfums de Marley do a lot of fragrances with mint. So to me, this stands out. I really like Darley. It's one of my favorites. Uh, obviously, as you can see by the fact that I have this in my top five, if, I think it's underappreciated. I think Darley is an underappreciated fragrance in the Parfums de Barley world. A lot of other fragrances get a lot of hype from them. This one doesn't. I love it. Number three for me is a caster. A caster. This is their really good oud fragrance. Um, people that come in that I've talked to that are Arabic or from the Middle East, and when they smell a caster, they say, <laughs> excuse me, reminds them of the bakor, which is the kind of, uh, you know, it, it's used in ceremonies and kind of uh, rituals and stuff in the Middle East, and it's where the, it's something that sits on the ground, it's like a, basically almost, almost like an incense burning, but it's oud mixed with all kinds of 
dried flowers. I mean, you know, you can mix a lot of different things, but this has that very good, well-blended oud with just so much more going on. And again, it's the feel. So when I smell this, I feel like I'm in the Middle East taking part in a ritualistic, beautiful ceremony. And again, for me, fragrance, right? It's about how it makes you feel. All right, next, number two. And this did not make number one. On previous lists I've done with Parfums de Marley, this was always number one. It's now number two, and that is Hobdon. I mean, look, it's, you know, these lists are subjective, right? You know, it's always changing, as I've said. To me, again, it's how it makes me feel. One of the first, this is the first fragrance I ever owned by them, Hobdon. I like it better than Ojan. To me, this has got the caramel. It's smoother. Um, it's got the apple. It's got the agar wood, which is the wood that oud comes from. Uh, amber, saffron. It's such a perfect fall fragrance. Right now, we're still in the fall. The weather's cooling down. I wear this one so much during the fall. It makes me feel warm. It makes me feel good. And that's what fragrance should be about, number two. And um, coming in, number one, this is my new number one, which I gotta say, on previous lists that I'd done maybe a year ago, wasn't even in my top five. And here it is now, number one, that is Kalan. Kalan, again, people love it, they hate it. I've said it before, for the last year and a half after it came out, I was pretty much in the middle. I didn't love it, I didn't hate it, I thought it was nice. I gained a whole new appreciation for it after Maurice dared me to wear it about a month ago out when I was going out and meeting some women on a certain night and they all fell in love with it. And then since then, I went out the next day and brought it, added it to my collection the very next day. That was on a Saturday when I, had, I wore it Sunday added it to the collection because what I really appreciate this is that just that it's, it's this beautiful kind of orange with this black pepper and it's just such a really interesting intense spiciness at the top with the orange and with the mandarin that gives it such a unique uh, feeling again. And so the opening to me is what grabs me about this fragrance. I just love the opening because it's different, and it's so different from the other Parfums de Marley fragrances. This one really is out there as far as, you know, what they typically do. And for those of you who like Parfums de Marley or know about them, you'll know there's a DNA within this fragrance. And I've talked to Yvonne Jacqueline, the managing director for the US. There's an, at least one note that is in all their fragrances that they don't even disclose. So it's something there that is going to smell that it's like a string running through everything. So you know when you smell Parfums de Marly, you're smelling one of their fragrances. If you don't even know what you're smelling and you smell a lot of fragrances, you're going to know Parfums de Marly because of that. I think it's ingenious how they do that. So there you have it. My top five Parfums de Marly fragrances right now. Again, that list always evolves and changes. As you can see, Kalan was before was not in my top five at all, and now it's number one. Because that's the one I'm wearing the most right now. And that's kind of how I judge fragrances. It's like, what am I wearing the most? Because that's what I like. That's a sure sign of what I like. Not just a theoretical, oh, I like that. Theoretically, people say that all the time. I see them come in here. They'll spray something, and they're like, oh, I love that. And then guess what? They'll never buy it, and they never wear it again. Theoretically, they like it. You know? So you gotta, you gotta go with what works and what you like. And uh, so that's it. Thanks guys for watching. Thank you for subscribing if you have. If you haven't, please go ahead and subscribe. I appreciate the support as always and hope everyone's doing well, staying safe and uh, hope you have a good Thanksgiving coming up too. I'll be back soon with a new video. Peace and love.